When expert scuba divers take on cave diving for the first time, their confidence and experience can work against them when catastrophe strikes. Either way, shortly afterward, the divers began to descend from the boat down to 30 meters or 100 feet toward the shipwreck. As they descended, along with the light dimming above them, they could see that visibility was poor due to a recent undersea earthquake. Cave is an intriguing site, a short, dark entrance nestled into the mountainside and located in Provo, Utah, high up on the mountain, close to BYU's infamous Y Mountain. Some folks know it as the Cave of Death, or the Gollum Cave, but for most folks, it was and continues to be completely unknown. One source says it was missed by city park employees sent to inspect the land when it was turned over to them as part of a development proposal to ensure open space. They had found it a year previous to the tragedy, but the entrance was only like 9 to 12 inches wide. What was the tragedy, you ask? Well, back in 2005, five friends decided to venture into the mountains at two in the morning looking for the secret cave. Technically, it's covered in water, like I said. It's only four feet tall, so it's more of a crawl space. So the real danger is that whole 18 by 20 inch water filled tunnel that goes 15 feet from one side of the cave's opening to the other. One of the five friends had explored the cave before and survived, Jennifer. So she'd encouraged her friends to venture into the cave with her, assuring them they would be able to hold their breath and make it to the other side without a problem. She was confident, despite the fact that she had sustained hypothermia and actually passed out the first time she had tested her luck in in the cave of death. So she's got her buddies, Blake Donner, Scott McDonald, Ariel Singe. They all follow Jennifer into the dark, narrow cave. And the fifth friend that was part of this group decided to stay behind and wait for their return. Jennifer disappeared onto the cold water. And one by one, the rest of the friends lowered themselves into the same narrow passageway, assuming that the other had made it across safely. But none of them made it out. According to the Utah County Search and Rescue Team, they were all facing the same direction when they were found. Lieutenant Dave Bennett believes that we believe they went to the cavern and were on their way out. So there was a rope under the water that led from one side of the cave to the other, but it didn't appear that any of them used the rope, meaning they could have easily missed the cave opening, gotten disoriented, and, well, passed away as a result. A caver that has survived this deadly swim in the past stated that he did not use the rope and ended up at a dead end of rocks, having completely missed the cave opening. He had to push himself backwards until he reached the opening, but that one mistake almost cost him his life as well. So, going back to the fifth friend of this mysterious friend group, by 6.25 a.m., when the group hadn't returned, he called for help, and the scene was a surprise for Provo rescue officials who didn't even know the cave existed. So if we're talking actual theories of what happened, other than what I've already stated, one theory is is that the four could have made it to the other opening of the cave, but died due to the high percentage of nitrogen underground. There only would have been 20.9% of oxygen, which would have been used up quickly after the group exited the water, replacing any good air with carbon dioxide. And it would have only been a few minutes before they became short of breath and had difficulty thinking, making it even harder for them to complete their exit swim back to the entrance of the cave. So, as you can imagine, with this tunnel being so narrow, it couldn't fit more than one person at a time. So each friend likely got into the water, expecting a clear exit, but instead ran into a blockage as each friend ran out of breath before reaching the exit. And this would explain why all of the friends were found facing the same direction, one after the other, facing the exit hole. So what were rescue crews doing? Well, they were pumping water out of the cave. They were pumping oxygen back in. They were trying to provide air for the victims in case they were alive and running out of air. And the pumping lowered the water level by two feet. And that's how the search and rescue folks got in. But it was nearly four hours from the time of the call to the police before searchers discovered the first body in the tunnel. All in all, this was a daring adventure gone horribly wrong that took the lives of four young individuals. So like I said before, crews eventually found the bodies, but it was just awful. So this tunnel between the two caverns was just a few minutes hike above the old Seven Peaks golf course, if anybody was wondering. Several searchers speculated that the first body found, that of Jennifer, might have blocked the way for the other three as they tried to get out, because only one of the three bodies was found on the floor of the tunnel. The other ones were floating. And Lieutenant Scott Finch of the Provo Police Department said that people have got to understand it's a very dangerous environment. He said that they want people to enjoy the caves and mountains, but they have to be prepared. Also, you might be wondering, 
Were these hikers prepared for this big dive? Was this just like a daring adventure? Well, they were wearing sandals. A lot of folks were in shorts. There was no shirts. Whereas you have the rescue crews that are using like underwater breathing apparatuses. They're using wetsuits. They're using air monitors. They did find one flashlight and a couple of unlit candles near the hikers. They're not sure if they belong to them though. The bodies were taken to a local mortuary for identification by family members and then transported to the medical examiner's office in Salt Lake City for the autopsy. And Bennett said like it was tough. They wanted to go in. They wanted to save a life. The crews had to be careful, they had to be slow, they had to be methodical, because they didn't want to endanger their own lives. Four rescuers constantly manned the entrance to the cave, but as many as seven were involved when they had to move surge equipment. Several emergency agencies were involved. We're talking the Provo Police and Fire Mountain Rescue Team, Utah County Search and Rescue, Department of Public Safety Dive Team, the Orem Fire Department Hazardous Materials Unit, like everybody. By the way, going back to those candles I mentioned a moment ago, one source says they were actually lit, which would have made things even worse. And they're still not sure if those flashlights actually belong to the group, but still, once again, that would have used up energy. It just wouldn't have been great. If you're wondering why the candles are kind of important, well, if those burned up the oxygen, and like I said before, there was only like 20.9% oxygen, that's not great. By the way, all four hikers lived in Utah County. They were all locals, so obviously they had found this cave before. One man by the name of Steve Hunley had dinner with the hikers the night before they left. And that night, Jennifer was talking talking about the popular cave. She's like, yeah, I passed out from the cold during a frightening experience, but like I made it out. I made it out safely and Steve, who was like, yeah, I don't think so. He said he would have gone to the cave Thursday morning as well, but he had to go to work. And like he said, he's been in there a couple of times before. The water was extremely cold and no wonder, Jennifer got hypothermia. Others who have explored the cave gathered around the area during the surge and said it was super easy to become disoriented and panic in the cave's underwater tunnel because it is such a small, dark space. Not ideal if you have a whole lot of people. Brian Lamprey has been through the tunnel, but says he was with experienced friends who helped guide him. He said while swimming back from the cavern, he missed the exit hole and ended up at a dead end. Wow, where have we heard that before? Only by scooting backwards was he able to relocate the hole and get out of there. So a report from the state medical examiner's office lists the cause of death of the four as, well, water-based, at least according to the Provo Police Record Supervisor. So what about the families? Well, hours after they heard of their daughter's death, the parents of Jennifer remained heartbroken, but they were, I guess, relieved that their daughter was not alone. Jennifer's father mentioned like his parents had passed away previously, and when he heard about Jennifer, the first thing he thought was that she was being greeted by them in heaven. He credited his family's faith and a strong support system of family, friends, and members of their community for helping them through the day. He said he was grateful for his beliefs. He's like, we know we'll see her again. He will always remember his daughter as fun-loving. She loved doing things with her friends. And he took comfort in knowing she was doing something she loved. She was with her friends. And it just went bad. They also spoke fondly of Blake, who was Jennifer's boyfriend. He was so thoughtful of his family. And that's what Jennifer's mother really respected about him. Jennifer's mother also worked with Blake's mother, who was a single parent. So she said like she felt bad for her family, but she felt even worse for Blake's mom because she couldn't imagine what she was going through. Blake was being described as an artist, a writer, a singer in a rock band. Turns out, I think they were, all friends were in the band. He was a student in school. He was involved in a lot of charity organizations. According to Provo Police, the fifth person was also a musician. So like I said, they were all part of this band. But now, sadly, he's the last person who saw his friends alive. He's just one of many suffering from that incident to this day. Never said a word on camera, never spoke in interviews, but the raw emotions just spoke volumes. Like after this, you saw the friends of the victims. You saw dozens of them trying to comfort one another in the face of an unthinkable loss. Thankfully, after the body were removed, the authorities decided to seal the cave with cement to prevent any further disaster, and a plaque now stands in remembrance of those who lost their lives. And that's all, folks. We'll see you next time.